often when you're doing a documentary or even a, um, a news piece, you might encounter a situation where an individual agrees to be filmed with the understanding that they will remain anonymous. And uh, so you are able to go ahead and film the piece, uh, but then when it comes time to editing, you need to obscure their face so that their uh, identity cannot be uh, recognized. And Edius makes that very easy. Let's open up our Edius project here, and let's say that this individual is doing an interview, but he's asked to remain anonymous. There's actually several ways that you could do that. You could actually start the process when you're filming. The way you light the person, for example, could be a, one way of, of obscuring the face or keeping the person anonymous. But if you have recorded the interview or the action in a normal way and you need to add that obscurity after the fact in post, the best way to do it, I believe, is using the mask effect. And so let's drop our mask on to our clip. If you're coming from an older version of Edius, you might uh, remember a filter called region tool that allowed you to define a certain region of your video clip and then add, uh, say, a mosaic filter to that region. Well, the region filter is no longer here, but it has been replaced by a much more robust tool called the mask tool. And the mask tool really does an amazing variety of things. Uh, and what we're going to show you right now is just one of hundreds of things that you can do with the mask tool. So it, it really is worthwhile getting to know the mask tool and how to use it. We have some tutorials here already recorded that demonstrate uh, some of the many features of the mask tool in reference to EDIUS version 6. And so if you are anxious to get going with understanding the mask tool before we are able to record uh, more tutorials using version 7, I, I believe that most everything that we demonstrate in version 6 will also work the same way in version 7. Not a lot has changed with the tool. So if you're keen on knowing how to use the mask tool before we actually get around to recording more tutorials on it, there is uh, uh, several tutorials here online already. All right, well, let's see what to do, how to obscure this guy's face. Let's go up and choose uh, the ellipse tool. Just click on it with your mouse. And then let's go down to our shot here. Now we can increase the size uh, of our image here in our box. First of all, we can expand our box out, but we do want to keep an eye here on the uh, record monitor, the preview monitor of our record side so that we can watch the changes in real time. But uh, let's open it up as much as we can and still allow ourselves to see that. And then we can change the inside view here. Let's see what happens if we go to 100%. That's too, way too much. Let's try 50%, still too much. And at 25%, uh, that uh, gives us a little better view. Let's go back and make sure that our ellipse tool is still selected. And once you have that selected, just take your mouse as you would almost with any drawing program. Click down on your left uh, mouse button and keep it held down as you create this oval mask that will cover the individual's face. Don't worry if it doesn't quite line up because once you let your mouse go, you can reposition that and even uh, resize it. And when you've got uh, the oval of a person's face covered, then what we want to do is, let's bring this down here, uh, go and click on the inside filter box. You have the outside filter, the inside. We want to click on the inside filter so that the changes that we make, the filter that we apply, will actually be applied to the inside portion of our selection and not the outside portion over here. So inside, and then let's go select a video filter that we can apply. You could probably uh, try working with the Gaussian blur here and uh, see if that is something that you like. And we'll see that it applies at a certain strength. We can go in and adjust the strength of that Gaussian blur here to get it to a point where you can see just a little bit of the face. But then 
you'll notice that it has quite a harsh edge to the uh, region that we've selected and we want to feather that out and so we go down to edge click soft and just take uh, your mouse and just increase the width of the edge there to give it a soft edge kind of feather out the edge if you can type in there probably 200 percent is fine okay so now as we look at our image or, or maybe play it is a good idea and you can uh, just hit the little play button here sometimes what might look as being perfectly obscured in a still may not necessarily be enough blur keep that anonymity all the way through the interview uh, especially if the person is moving their head a little bit uh, you might want to increase the size of your filter and also the strength. Let's go back and maybe just add some more blur there. Okay, try playing that back. And I think that's uh, probably a lot better. Another filter that is very commonly used to obscure the face and to keep a person anonymous is the mosaic filter. Let's try that. And you'll see that by default, it's probably not enough of a mosaic. So we need to go back to our filter and uh, add some more uh, mosaic to that. And as you slide this across, you'll see that uh, uh, you can uh, find a point there where you can still see quite a bit of the face, you know, maybe the eyes, the mouth, but still keep the person anonymous. Now, in addition to the plain mosaic that comes by default, uh, when you use this filter, there is uh, a number that you can take a look at here just with this little drop down menu. You, you can take a look at uh, some of the other block patterns and see if there's something that uh, might be a little bit more pleasing to yourself or to your client. Okay, and then again, you can uh, strengthen that up a little bit and uh, if need be, add more softness to the edge of that. Okay, let's try taking a look at that. And that looks pretty good. Now there may be situations where the person moves their head so much that they move outside of the region of the area that you've defined with your filter. And then they become <laughs> obvious again. It'd be very easy for anybody to tell who it, who it was, or at least their face would be recognizable. So if you have a situation like that, like for example, let's say we were obscuring this man's face here. Let's do another quick uh, filter on this one. Close out of this and go after our mask tool again. Drop it on this clip and open up our mask tool. Go for our lips and uh, create our oval here on the guy's face. and add our inside filter. Let's use the mosaic filter. I think that's probably the most common one that's used for this purpose. And uh, this time we'll just stay with the plane, but we're gonna add some more blockiness to that. And we will then also add some softness. Let's just add 200. Might not need as much this time because our oval is uh, smaller, but that looks not too bad. And then let's notice what happens as we play this clip. Even though he is anonymous at this point, when he reaches forward to get some more vegetables, we see that his face has become completely recognizable. So what do we do in a case like that? Well, uh, let's go back into our tool. Now you'll notice down here, uh, there's this little inside timeline playhead. And as we scroll this across, uh, we see that the, the playhead cursor on our timeline also moves in correspondence to that and goes all the way to the end of the clip. And having this timeline displayed inside of your filter means that you can apply keyframes and adjust how the filter is applied over the length of the clip. 
And uh, the way that we do that is, first of all, let's take our cursor and position it at the very first frame of our clip. And then let's go over here to this box and click on Mask. And then let's click on this little diamond here, the key, Add Keyframe. And you'll see that that adds a keyframe to every one of our options here. We probably don't need all of these options, but it's just I find easier just to click them all. Okay, and then let's uh, slowly uh, take our playhead across and watch the person's head. And as we see, just before we see him start to move, let's add another keyframe list here. Another list of keyframes. That means that in between these two rows of keyframes, that mask is going to stay completely uh, where we placed it to start with. But now, as the person begins to move, and he seems to kind of hold his position right about there, so as he reaches that position, we could add another row of keyframes, and then just go up to our mask and uh, bring it over. Now, as we play our, our playhead back, we see that this mask is going to follow him as he leans forward. And if it's not following quite fast enough, if there's a, a frame or two there where he gets ahead of it, well, I don't think he does. Let's play it up here. Well, he does move out of it just for a few frames there, so we might want to just grab a hold of that and, and slide it to the left a little bit so that it moves just a little faster. And I think that that works better. And then we see he leans back right about here. So let's add another list of keyframes there and then just again follow him back. We'll uh, put another list of keyframes there and then reposition our mask there. We can maybe make it a little bigger. We see that it might not be quite enough. Okay, so let's uh, take a look then. Let's play our clip and see if we're happy with that. And if at any point uh, you start to recognize the face, of course, you can go back in and change the intensity or the strength of the mosaic. We see that if we were playing it this long, we'd have to uh, make some adjustments there at the end. All right, well, I think that that uh, about does it for how to protect a person's identity in your documentary.